Nation Football Friday Night with Matt Roberts starts now. You're watching Friday Night Football. Hey there, good evening to you. Welcome into your Go Nation Friday Night Football Series. We've got a ton of great games for you. Then we start with our Game of the Week. Southern Lab looking for their second win in a row against Ascension Catholic out at A.W. Mumford Stadium. Beautiful new surface out there for coaching company. We pick this up in the second quarter. Kittens already a big one. Chad Brown making the big play right there on the sack. Kittens defense going back to work right here. Pass picked off by Devontae White there. He takes that one all the way back into Ascension Catholic territory. The Kitten offense going to get their act together, join in as well. As Tyron Pierce gets this one and takes it up the middle, will not be caught, makes it 22 to nothing in favor of the Kittens. So they got them thinking run. Why not throw it over their heads, right? Jacob Blazin here over the top. That makes it 28 nothing Southern Lab at that point. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Quincy Fillmore once again. Over the top as Southern Lap all over Ascension Catholic this evening. They win it by a final of 50 to nothing. Our own Taylor Halsey is at this game all night and she joins us now with more. Thanks, Matt. I'm out here at A.W. Mumford Stadium where the Southern Lab Kittens just finished up against Ascension Catholic and it was a good old fashioned beat down. Final score 50 to 0. Southern Lab, the defending 1A state champions in their first district game. They really looked in late season form. Coach mentioned a couple of penalties here or there, but really what can you say after you guys, after a performance like that, junior wide receiver Cameron, Cameron Thomas with three touchdowns tonight. It was a great game for the Southern Lab Kittens. Here's what Coach Randall had to say about the win. Um, I mean, we, we basically just told him that we got to stay focused. It's just one game at the end of the day, but um, this was a big win for us. It was the first district game, and we know that we wanted to come out. And this was part of our goal to be district champs at the end of the year. So, we, um, you know, it's one down with five to go. And I told him that, you know, enjoy this win, 24 hours, and then on, um, on Monday we'll, we'll be right back at it. First uh, district win, but you already look kind of in late season form, putting up 50 points like that in your defense, not allowing any. So I guess talk about some of the highlights for you tonight after out of state. Um, I must say, that I don't think we played perfect, but I think we did come out. We had some great spots. We had some great things that we, that we had on, um, that we just played out here tonight. Some of the things that I wanted to see, basically, by, um, you know, the first couple of games. Um, I think we had a lot of penalties. I think we had a lot of missed assignments that, that we had. And by being early in the year, I mean, you know, those things were to be expected. And But I think that coming out just tonight that we came out and we showed some, um, you know, we, uh, we made up a lot of those mistakes that we were making earlier and uh, we came out to play football. Oh, I mean, we got St. John next, um, another district uh, opponent. We got to get back and do that film, and then we'll be right back to work. Taylor, well, let's check out some more area scores tonight in 5A, a couple of non-district tilts. Scotlandville traveling to East Ascension. Scotlandville getting the 34-20 win in that ball game, and up in Zachary. Calvary Baptist making the trip to the Bronco Corral, and it was not a good one. Zachary, 63-33 over Calvary Baptist. Well, all right, don't go anywhere. Still more action to come on your Go Nation Friday Night Football Show. A little private school action. Some powers in Division One and Two square off in Lafayette as Catholic visit St. Thomas More. And then back here, closer to home, we've got Episcopal playing host to East Feliciana. Don't go away. We have plenty more coming back after the break. You're watching Louisiana Go Nation. Hey there, welcome back into your Go Nation Football Friday night. Next up, we check in on some teams that both finished their season at the Dome a year ago as Catholic comes in ranked fourth in Division I, while St. Thomas More is seventh in Division II. Let's head west on I-10 for this one. St. Thomas More hosting Catholic. First quarter, no score here. Cougars quarterback. Nate Cox. Well, we got to run out of the smoke first. St. Thomas Moore, those shiny helmets. Good looking unis there for the Cougs there. Put him to good work here. Nate Cox, Matthew LaGrange stopped just shy of the end zone there. He is pulled down just before getting into the end zone. A few plays later, though, Cox is going to find his boy, Matthew LaGrange, here. They're going to finish the job. St. Thomas Moore up 6 0. We go to the second. Cougs up 6 3 now, not for long. Catholic quarterback, Zach Crawford. Finds Patrick Dunn for the touchdown. The Bears take the 10-7 lead. Let's take a look at the final score in this one tonight. Catholic taking care of St. Thomas Moore, 
to 12. Now we come back a little closer to home. Division three Episcopal played host to East Feliciana tonight over at Olympia Stadium. Episcopal coming out their first loss of the season, trying to get back on track. Six nothing Tigers in the second quarter. Caden Dixon takes this one around the right side in for six. Extra point is good. Dickinson getting some love from the students on his birthday of all days. The Knights lead it 7-6. Tigers trying to answer here. Javante Franklin dancing through the Episcopal secondary. He is gone. But as you normally do, check for the flag, and that's bringing it back. And a few plays later, the night defense takes advantage. Marvell Jackson keeps it, and that's not going to be a good idea. Going the wrong way, the Episcopal defense holds to keep it at 7-6. But under 50 seconds to play in the half, Tigers figuring, hey, what do we got to lose? Throwing it up for Tredarius Carr, and he makes the grab 57 yards. The Tigers take the lead into the half, 14-7 as East Feliciana. Uh, Episcopal, East Feliciana rather escaping with the 26-21 victory over Episcopal. Capital and Madison Prep over at Memorial Stadium. We pick it up in the second quarter. Chargers up 28-0, throwing downfield to the big man. Tylen Butler makes the catch deep in Capital territory. The Capital defense going to stand up right here in the red zone. Devin Joseph Jr., interception there, and he is going to take that one all the way to the barn. Cuts the deficit to 28-6, but Madison Prep all over Capitol this evening out at Memorial Stadium. Live Oak trying to punt away here against St. Michael. The Warrior defense all over the bad snap, so they take over in Eagle territory. But Live Oak gets the ball back. Hunter Kelly knows exactly what to do with it. On the pitch here, going to beat everyone to the corner. And he is going to take that in for six Eagles on top, 7-0. Traylon Sibley going to try to... Get that one back. Going to launch this one deep towards the end zone. Unfortunately, he finds Junior Edwards wearing the wrong jersey, so the Eagles take over once again. And once again, their offense going to take advantage here. A few yards out, Ryan Morris gives the Eagles a 14-0 lead as Live Oak all over St. Michael tonight. They win it 56-14. Let's check out some other scores around the area. The Cubs hitting the road to take on West Feliciana. Uhi falling 40 to 10 and over in Denham tonight. Yellow Jackets hosting the Panthers of McKinley. Denham Springs rolling past McKinley 35 to 19. And coming up here in just a bit, our own Brian Holland on the ground in Auburn. We'll check in with him on what's up with both Tigers and then check in with the Southern Jags as they head up to Alabama A&M. Stick around. We'll be right back. You're watching Louisiana Go Nation. Hey there and good evening. Well, the LSU Tigers are tasked with their first SEC road game of the season against the Auburn Tigers. We told you Brian Holland, he is there. He is on the ground at Auburn, but having some technical difficulties with the uh, satellite shot there. But LSU really looking to take care, take advantage of an Auburn offense that has really struggled and really can't settle on which quarterback they want to get them to move the ball. The Tigers, on the other hand, feel like they found their guy in Danny Etling. Danny Etling taking the reins as the starting quarterback and really feeling more and more comfortable with each passing game leading the Tigers. I feel good. I think, uh, I think we had a lot of guys out there making plays and, and uh, I think we got on the ball pretty well and I think they did a lot of things great after the, after the catch and you know we had great protection up front and we just you know we kind of did what we were supposed to do and, and we came out with a win. The receivers that are out you know on routes are really looking for the Danny Etling style of you know throw, and uh, I think I think it's great. I think it's good for our offense. I think it's it allows for uh, you know ad lib plays that make first downs. All right, we'll keep it right here. We'll have full coverage from the LSU game tomorrow with Brian. Also, the Southern Jaguars in action up in Huntsville, trying to come back off that 64 to six win over Alabama State. Going to need some razor focus this weekend. You got to bring the right energy and the right excitement to, to every practice. It'll carry over to the game, especially when you're going on the road. So our focus this week has really been on us and just understanding what Alabama a and is going to present and just making sure that we focus on us and we have the right mannerisms and the right mindset for us going to take on them. Coverage here on Local 33 throughout the weekend for Southern and LSU. Thanks to our hardworking crew again tonight for Football Friday Night. Have a great night. We'll see you here tomorrow.